I will tell you who my guest is. But remember, this show is not just live on Star 103.5 FM. It's also live on Empire FM in Takradi and Ultimate FM in Kumasi. And since I'm talking about Empire, just to remind you that Empire is putting together something very wonderful in Second D, what they call Yeswaso. Yes, so, so I hear it is huge in second year, and so you need to be part of this celebration by Empire FM, and of course, it's supported by uh, GH1 TV. And um, also to remind you that Ultimate FM is your, should be your station of choice in Kumasi. So if you're not listening to Ultimate right now, you're truly missing out. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Star Chat. I'm so happy to be back with you on the radio. All right, let me go straight to my guest for tonight. Of course, when you saw his flyer, you knew very well that he's earned his stripes in democracy and politics. He once worked with Gihok Distilleries Company Limited and then as a manager for the Nkramai Rural Bank and Sefi Aswanso. Asawenso, okay, Asawenso Rural Bank as a trainee manager. He doubled as, uh, okay, he doubled in stock brokerage and investment banking with the National Trust Holding Company Limited, the NTHC. He switched from studying market trends and making viable investment to studying a voting population and the intricacies of politics led him into the frontline politics as MP in 1992 until 2015. 2005, I mean, when he contested for the chief scribe position of the NDC, a position he's held for 17 good years. He speaks a lot about the man and his commitment to a cause. A quick research of him revealed an interesting deduction. When a study for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah stood on the podium to herald the birth of Ghana, somewhere in Sekwa, an innocuous-looking three-month-old baby had been born. Little did his parents know that this entry will be, the la will be the last Christmas in the then Gold Coast and later become a reference point for political leadership. His nickname is evident in the quote by Bagamiki Habaimimiyane's Spells of Eternity that don't be afraid to bite on a giant. In this case, you can replace a giant with an elephant. Learn from the mosquito. Johnson is here in Ketia, General Secretary of the NDC, is my guest on the award winning personality chat show Star Chat, which is live on Star 103.5 FM, of course, in Accra, Ultimate 106.9 in Kumasi, and Empire 102.7 FM in Second D Takarade. General, you are welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's good to much. see you. I don't remember the last it's, time I saw you. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yes. It was after I interviewed you. Yes. That was last year or so, or last two no, years. Two years two ago. Two years ago. Yes. It's been such a long but of course I see you on TV sure. every now and then, giving the government a lot of heat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you plan it or when you see the microphone and the camera, it just comes to you because things are going bad as far as you're concerned? Well, as you know, I don't plan anything. And, uh, <laughs> indeed, I don't take synopsis for any interview. Absolutely, that's true. I just uh, Turn up. try my best yeah. to answer questions with the knowledge that I have. And if I don't have any knowledge about the question, I'll tell you. Right. That's all. That, yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> and I've interviewed you a few times. Yes. And I know when you say no, it's a no. You will never go back, yes. no matter how you twist it. Yeah. But how have you been? How has life been for you? Well, we are still struggling <laughs> to get back to power. Right. Uh, when you say struggling, so what does it mean? Well, after an election, if mm. your party is not declared winners, mm. you have a lot of things to deal with. Okay. Uh, at times, despondency and right. all that. So you need to do a lot. Mm. to reorganize and make sure that uh, mm. you put the party in battle ready mode. Right. And this is what we've been doing. Is the, the despondency the same as what you experienced in 2016 after your loss? Between 2020 and 2016, would you say that despondency was the same among the rank and file of the party? Considering that in 2020, you came so close. In fact, according to you, uh, according to your party, you won the election. You call it a stolen verdict. So how did the rank and file take this defeat per the EC's announcement, declaration, and what you experienced in 2016? Well, there are different 
in several respects. Okay. In 2016, it was a matter of shock because nobody was expecting this. Were you shocked? You were because we were very confident okay. that we'll be winning. But uh, we couldn't fault the process. Okay. So we quickly overcame that and endorsed the victory of MPP mm. and went ahead. In this particular case where you know you have won and that there has been effort to steal your verdict, it becomes more painful because uh, we are very close to the trophy and uh, it has been taken away from you. So that's the difference. Okay. And so how have you been able to psych your rank and file up uh, to just look forward to 2024? In fact, they are already psyched up because oh. they, they feel stolen. Okay. And so everybody is uh, upbeat, waiting for 2024. Okay. And there are a lot of things that were done uh, against us and our people believing in a uh, you know, proper post-election adjudication. Mm. Feel disappointed. So now... Uh, the feeling is that let everybody throw all caution to the wind. Mm. Let us carry our referee <laughs> into the ring, as right. uh, Professor Azuma Nelson <laughs> once said. <laughs> right. So, if nothing is done to address these concerns, I'm afraid that uh, the next election will be a very difficult election. Have you have you attempted to get these things? who have yeah, suffered. Right. Mm violence without any redress mm. naturally they are likely to uh, prepare okay. to defend themselves against such violence it, we've tried okay. everything okay. to uh, address these uh, challenges in fact the major effort mm. that has been put in place was when uh, the secretary general of the commonwealth right came and then the united nations also delegated uh, dr chambers mm. ECOWAS also delegated some people they came and organized some retreat between our, ourselves the electoral commission the ghana peace council mm. and mpp for us to figure out how we can chart a common path that will take us out of this quagmire uh, they were at the end of the retreat in Nada, Aqua Safari. Mm. We believe that uh, there were certain common understandings as to the roadmap. Mm. So these um, foreign actors left, and uh, we were expecting that the Peace Council and the Electoral Commission will follow up on the roadmap. And uh, because of that belief, mm. we undertook to document proposals for electoral reform, which we think can take mm. us out of this problem. We have since submitted the reform proposals to all these bodies, and <laughs> next to nothing has happened. So the roadmap has been ditched? Well, so far, right. we are not there yet, but we believe that so far nothing has happened. Okay. And so if not... Have you knocked on doors? Have yes, you? we've been knocking and we've written back to the Peace Council that where are we going from Ada? Mm -hmm. And they, they seem not to have any idea. Have they responded what, to your letters? Yes, they were rather calling us to tell them what <laughs> where we should be going. <laughs> when they are actually <laughs> the facilitators. Right. So, um, we think do, that... Do you, do you feel, do you feel, and I'm not asking this question because you are general secretary of the party, but because you are a Ghanaian. Yeah. And considering the scenes we saw uh, in 2020, which were very unpalatable uh, to, to watch. Do you feel let down by the Peace Council and to a large extent the religious bodies of this country? Because some of them are pretty loud Very when much so. some issues come up. Very much so. Right. We feel let down. Particularly when we see this same Peace Council and other people now getting up to again come to talk to us about the need to work together. <laughs> it, it becomes uh, laughable. Right. Yeah. So we, we feel that they seem to be 
a categorization of uh, citizens in this country when it affects one party then that's okay we can move along but when it affects the other side then there is a cause for concern do, do you feel the same way about the media that the media paints the NPP with a different brush and another brush for the NDC well it used to be the case right. but uh, things are changing right. and there has been appreciable change okay now and I believe that the media is now struggling to find space with the incoming government so <laughs> so everyone, <laughs> <laughs> everybody wants to now at least come closer to the middle and that's, a good <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good one sometimes i hear politicians say that life is hell in opposition what does it mean well maybe you ask those politicians mm, well you, 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 are, you are you are a very experienced yes. politician as far as i'm concerned mm. i wouldn't say life is hell that much okay because uh, as a general secretary my life doesn't change whether we are in government or we are in opposition right the only area where i think uh, it hurts is where there is deliberate effort by a ruling government to destroy your business uh, with the thinking that when you are weak financially you will come begging them for, for, for has that happened to some yes, of my you? businesses have been destroyed and uh, how many businesses my children well everybody knows me to be into block making yeah and uh, about four block factories I was operating none of them is functioning properly they've all collapsed oh, one is limping as for the three I've stopped production completely. W why in one case uh, I had one in Dodoa uh, where a district assembly came to, uh, they had awarded a project mm. to some contractor and they needed pavement blocks. And I had a lot of them and they wanted the project pretty fast. Right. So they came, we entered into uh, documentation and then I had to supply those pavement blocks mm. after supplying the project has been done and commissioned but the assembly has refused to pay the contractor so i remain unpaid so all the the monies that i should be buying raw materials with right. and so on but do you think it's, up. do you I think it's deliberate yes it's deliberate it's, the, the it's deliberate deliberately the, haven't paid the contractor yes 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 the funding is from a secured source okay so we knew about that and the assembly committed itself right. uh, on paper that let the contractor take those things right. we undertake to pay you never happened and uh, how the long ago the money mm. is still there but they have decided not to pay just I've, because it's your I've business report, yes i've reported to the various at least two ministers of uh, local government nothing has happened to date wow but i don't have the appetite to take them to court yet <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes but you will eventually well <laughs> time will tell <laughs> <laughs> and if you win what would be what would be your first statement because the last time you won a case in court if you I gave win, us the name for the uh, you gave us an inscription you'll be using I win, they will certainly be um, judgment debt. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Judgment debt because. Uh, okay, yes. and so you feel that it's there was a deliberate ploy by this administration to weaken. Yes, yes. yes. Op opposition figures. So that you will come begging. Oh. You know, right. uh, they believe in some Russian philosophy. I believe Stalin or Lenin. Mm. He gathered his generals on one chilly winter morning mm. in Siberia, mm. very, very chilly. He asked that they should produce uh, a hen. Mm. So they brought the fowl and he said, pluck all the feathers <laughs> to leave the, 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 in the, the cold. fowl in the cold, to leave the fowl naked so it can suffer the chill of the, of the weather. Mm. They did just that and uh, left the fowl mm. there on the snow 
He said, bring me grains. They got him corn. And he threw the corn. The cow, the fowl was following him <laughs> to eat the... <laughs> and he said, the lesson is that mm -hmm. even if you impoverish the people, they become so poor that they think that without you, they can't survive. So if you right. give them money, they will still follow you. They forget about the pain you have inflicted on them. Okay. And that is precisely what President Akufuado and their government believes in. They think that make the people poor and the people will see you as the only source of bread. So when you drop the, uh, the crumbs, they will be following you. That is what they, 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 they do. Wow. But you do have friends in the party, don't you? Yes, in, in the NPP. Very great friends. Big, big shots in the very party. Very big shots, in, uh, if, including Nanako Fadi himself. But have you tried to speak to any of them about the situation? Oh, I don't want fevers. Okay. When it is about my rights, I don't okay. want fevers. Okay. And I believe that is the favor. That is what they believe in. That I should come asking for fevers. So that when it comes to doing my work properly, they will be asking me for favors. I don't believe in just favors. If it is my right, it is my right. right. Uh, I'm not like the judges whose uh, allowances get frozen until they rely on, according to their own statement, they rely on their connections at Flagstaff House to get to get their their allowances paid, which is completely unconstitutional, and that works against the independence of the judiciary okay okay so st still on that i mean you, you talked about how uh, businesses of opposition figures are being crippled when you are in power as well do you hear if indeed and then i'm you're a very honest man i must give you that do people in the other on the other side feel the same way too that the ndc cripples their businesses because oh, no. they no. You don't if do you that. ask the business community, mm. they will tell you that when NDC is in power, everybody has the chance to do their business. Mm. Of course, you cannot vouch for everybody mm. in the country. But I know that anywhere it came to the attention of uh, Professor Mills or President Mahama, that some busybody or party fanatic somewhere has actively taking steps to sabotage somebody's business, he will, he, will, he will call the person to order and make sure that there is restitution and then the person is allowed to do their business. Indeed, uh, it used to be the case during uh, the earlier uh, pre-Fourth Republican right. era. So that one, it cuts across. Right both political divides. Mm. When this guy comes, then he deals with the other. When that one comes, mm. he deals with the other. And so, and I knew that during President Rawlings's era, uh, things like that were happening. But Professor Mills came and uh, instituted a clean break. Okay. And in fact, I can tell you that that attitude of Professor Mills became uh, one of the reasons why he had problems with President Rollins. Because Professor Mills said that he couldn't inherit anybody's enemies. And so there must be a clean break. And he used to tell us in cabinet that an eye for an eye will leave society blind. Mm. So there must be a clean break somewhere and let people go about their mm. businesses. There have been several attempts in those days. I was aware of several mm. attempts by some ministers to report one business or the other that these people were in bed with President Kofo. Right. These are MPP businesses. So we must take this license from this man or that man. He stood his ground mm. and made sure that look, if there is one opportunity which some one person is in Kumbaran and his MPP. Our duty is to create three more opportunities so that <laughs> NDC people have three against one, right. not to go and cripple him in one area. Mm. And so we thought that what Professor Mills implemented uh, could represent the, the threshold, I mean, so that the nation will walk a different okay. path. 
So what MPP is implementing has taken us back to the uh, prey at our meals days. Will there be and reprisals? It, it's very dangerous. Will there be reprisals? I will not be the person to say whether there will be reprisals or not. Mm. But what I can say is that people are very much annoyed. And there could be an attempt at reprisals. But it depends on the leadership that will emerge at that time. Okay. I, I want to just change the course of the discussion a bit. How, how did you get into politics? And why the NDC? <laughs> <laughs> you, you could have gone down Kwabuzia. Yes. Because uh, my area was predominantly Precisely. down Kwabuzia. So what happened? Uh, because I joined the revolutionary uh, effort okay. very early. Okay. You know, when I grew old, the first uh, active political activity that I engaged in was the fight against military regime. The right. Um, kind of Kutua Champong and later to General Kufu's regime. That was where uh, I cut my political teeth. Right. And that was where um, I was following Nana Kufuado and others mm. who were um, um, the leaders of the People's Movement for Freedom and Justice. So you've known him for a long time? Yes, yes, I've worked with him okay. <laughs> for some time. Right. So they were our mentors. Okay. We followed them. Is he still your mentor? During No, I feel very disappointed in, in, uh, in him now. So, and we believed that uh, they could offer very good leadership for this country. And because of that, we followed them to fight the Achampong, uh, Akufu government. Mm. I participated actively in the campaign for no during the referendum mm. uh, about union government. Yeah. And uh, I, I became the first, uh, for the first time in my life, I became... Uh, a polling agent <laughs> for no. <laughs> <laughs> How was the experience? Oh well, I I felt it. It felt very gratifying. You know? <laughs> I wasn't giving food, nothing, <laughs> and by the close of pools, I had to carry the ballot box for, <laughs> for five miles <laughs> to the to the next center right. and so on. But I still felt that I was yeah. working in the service of the nation. So after that. Uh, then we entered into partisan mm. politics and we were following one key person, lawyer Obimanu, not Justice Obimanu, who just passed, the father. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the first lawyer in my community, and then um, so we were just following him as students, right? And so he was with the Buzia Dankwa group at that time. Mm. But somewhere along the line, Akufu jailed him. So when he came out of uh, the detention, he had been there with uh, Dr. Belson. Mm -hmm. So when they came out, they decided to abandon the Buzia Dankwa group and then to form a new party called the Third Force. Right. So we felt abandoned because we all knew we were in Buzia's right. district and everything was being done to prepare our mentor to right. go to parliament and then after some detention he comes and disappoints all of us and so we're left looking for other mm -hmm. means because he left the Buzia Dankwa ticket somebody else from a different town mm -hmm. took it um, Mr. J.K. Amankwa took it and so we from Sekwa mm -hmm. felt that still it was our turn to produce a member of parliament so right. we went in for another lecturer okay. who then took the, the ticket of uh, UNC. Mm. So that was my first drift away from the Buzia Dankwa right. tradition. So we joined the uh, United National Convention. Fortunately for me too, we met Nana Kufado there <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Professor Dubuahin there. Right. They had problem with the UP tradition mm -hmm. because there was a struggle for leadership. Okay. And um, the people from Eastern region felt that it was a turn of um, 
Pauli, mm. who was one of the last right. uh, uh, big six mm. persons. So they felt that he should be given the opportunity to lead the country before he passes. And then the, uh, the Buzia Dankwa people in Ashanti felt that, no, during the time of Buzia, um, he especially prepared Victor Usu to take over mm -hmm. from him. So now that Buzia was no more, Victor the Usu Victor should lead yeah. the party. So that struggle between Pauli and Victor Usu split mm. that party. And so uh, about two thirds of the group followed Victor Usu. And then the one third, led by the Eastern Region guys, mm. left the party. And then at the same time, similar thing was also happening in the CPP right. group. So CPP2 was split in the middle and uh, about one third of that one also left. Mm. And the two sides came together to form a third force which was then called the United it, National right. Convention. So that was where we all met again with uh, uh, Adubuahin and uh, right. uh, Nanado. Mm -hmm. And so we went in and we emerged dead. Uh, that was where I started as a, a constituency organizer. Okay. Okay. And we, <laughs> we came dead. So it meant that I had left uh, right. Abuzia. Did you regret group. it? No, 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 no. Okay. So when the coup that toppled um, uh, Liman's government mm. came, the prominent people within that group were all from the the UNC. Okay. So it became natural for us <laughs> <laughs> to, 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 to be with them. Right. So we started and uh, I organized the first People's Defense Committee in my area. Right. And then I then became a kid. So, so by the time we came to multi-party regime. Mm. I had been recognized as a, a kid, a very hard working right. and you know, at times fearsome kid because, <laughs> of, <laughs> because of the things I did. <laughs> and so, what were some okay. of the things you did, if you don't mind? I forced my people to mm. engage in communal labor to okay. uh, initiate projects. Okay. It wasn't like punishing people mm. and all that, but uh, you know, 23 miles uh, road from Sequa to Brekum. We organized communal labor and cleared the road for 23 miles wow. and filled in potholes. Wow. We started the uh, 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 village dams, two of them right. in Sequa, to provide water and many, many other things. And they are still there now. So that's why that laid my political foundation. Right. And so eventually, when it became uh, you know we came to the time for elections mm. it was like the people chose me and they right. were running after me rather yeah. than me going to campaign right so by that time i was uh, doing this stock brokerage business mm. in accra and i was virtually forced to resign to go <laughs> and, and get to parliament. how did your family feel that you, you were leaving a very stable job yes to go to parliament you were you, you but they used my family to put pressure <laughs> on <me. laughs> to resign right. yes. yeah because they thought that uh, becoming an empty yeah. was something. are you are you chronicling all of these are you writing a book on your experience. I'll, I'll write it. You will? Yes. I mean, it will be a great read. Because I believe that if you write too early, you die too early. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. I've written, I've written some uh, booklet. Okay. Um, chronicling my effort at building a secondary school mm. in my town. Right. As a assemblyman and mm. cadre of the revolution. Mm. Uh, God being so good, it is one of the leading secondary schools in oh. have for now. Bless and you. And so they have placed my bust in front of them. <laughs> you must be proud. The founder, and I'm very proud. You about should. That. You absolutely yeah, should be so proud. I've put together yeah, how you did that. We got all these things. Okay. Done. Now you mentioned something very important: communal labor. Yeah. It's missing now. Yes. I mean, th there's been a few attempts here and there to rally Ghanaians to 
clean their neighborhood, do this, do that, but it really isn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's so? Why is that communal labor spirit gone? It was, it's a modernization. Yes, no, it's a deliberate effort mm. by the MPP group to kill the communal labor spirit. How? During uh, um, their time, from 1996 and 2000 thereabouts, mm. they started campaigning that whatever we mobilize the people to do, they will come around to say that, oh, your community leader has been paid for this and you are working. Mm. So it was a deliberate effort to weaken our party at that time because we still, even after changing over from the revolution to multi-party, mm -hmm. the NDC was very much interested in communal labor to supplement the effort of government mm. in the communities. So when we started as members of parliament, we were still organizing communal labor. Right. But when you organize, then the other side will come and say, oh, why do you have to use labor to do this when government has paid the money to the MP? Mm. So that's how it got killed. And we are where we are now. You think they we would have been better off if yeah, yeah, we had yeah, yeah. the communal labor it's spirit still? The labor spirit is a very good uh, supplement to government effort. There are a lot of things. What they are trying to do now that clean your, your frontage and yeah. all this thing is because they have killed the communal labor spirit. Otherwise, nobody would now go yeah. there. They would not take a minister. And in fact, during the time of President Rollins, when I was a deputy minister, President Rollins came to Nima here to organize, to lead a communal the labor. Yeah. And he entered a gutter yeah. to the silt. It became a national scandal. <laughs> MPP newspapers blasting him all over the place. He has uh, disgraced the presidency by entering a gutter. So they consciously you know, de-emphasize communal labor and demonize people who are engaged in organizing communal labor. Mm. And that is why we are where we are now. Okay. But you've been in politics for such a long time. Your family must be used to yes. it by now, are yes. they? Yes, they are used to it by now. And I'm proud, particularly my children. They've suffered so much because of How? these politics. Um, my son, you know, he is he in Ghana? Oh, he just left briefly to okay. visit the wife in US. He okay. Oh, back. he's married. Yes, okay. he'll be back maybe next week. Okay. But he's been all along in Ghana. Okay. These stories about I see Dunkatia's children living outside and they are very untrue. <laughs> <laughs> he's back and he's very much into NDC politics. Oh, he is. Yes. Did he, you drag him into it, or he? Well, just he felt attracted. Okay. into it and he just got in, in and more so uh, he didn't have anything immediately on his hands right. doing. He was employed by a private company uh, to manage a Steve Doran operation. Okay. He holds a master's in business administration and is okay. doing his PhD. So he was managing a private company, Steve Doran company mm. at the harbor. When MPP came to power they threatened the the owner of the company that my son was too politically exposed, exposed to be working there so my son could facilitate the importation of weapons to do a coup d'etat so either he sat my son or they withdraw his license you're not kidding so he discussed it with me i said okay then Kwaku don't don't call somebody's license to be <laughs> withdrawn so he left and he's been unemployed all along. Then my daughter. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. I want to stay on that for a, mm -hmm. a short while. Mm -hmm. And you never picked up a phone to ask any questions? No, no, no. Because I don't want to be begging people. My son has a right what, to Was work. he disappointed? How, how did your son feel? Because he, he earned that job he, so he great. He with me and he knows the risks okay. associated with my job. So my children never... Is he your eldest? Son. No, he's the second. The okay. first one it's a woman okay and he also uh, she also um, is almost 
done with her PhD. Okay. But he, he, your, your children are learned. <laughs> yeah, they love they love school. They must they must go beyond beyond their, their dad. Yes. Absolutely, yes. I agree. Yeah. So, she has been working with the National Health Insurance. Okay. And so when there was a change of government, they decided to punish her. And she decided to stay on course. So the the sort of punishment that she has gone through, I cannot narrate it here, but she's still on She's course. still there. She's still in the she was uh, She's a tough cookie. Very tough. Took after her yeah, dad. Yes, she was very tough. So they suggested that she should resign. Fearing that maybe if they sacked her without cause, there'll mm. be trouble. He said, Why should I resign? <laughs> he said, wow. I, but is, I said, You are not your father. He said, Yes, but she didn't bring me here. Mm. I'm a Ghanaian. I got this employment. So they did she get a job because you are no, her dad? No, because mm. she was qualified. She did her master's in the risk management. Okay. Uh -huh. So she has been tossed around and dumped in some he, he she was with the national headquarters she has been dumped in some district without any work in fact we had to buy a uh, her chair because they said there was no chair for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get her a seat yes i'm telling you we bought the chair from home and then was placed and she refuses to some, resign in some corridor i uh, once you pay i like her, her. so she has yeah. been there today she's still there <laughs> wow so you, yeah, it is not just you who has suffered it's not just your businesses but your children have been yeah, 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 yeah. affected as well yes that is so that is the aspect of our politics that, yeah that because people say uh, some part of a lot of a huge part of our politics is dirty mm -hmm. This must be those things, one of the reasons. Yeah, yeah, those things must change. Otherwise, uh, my circumstances are not... And you're not, you're not bothered. I mean, you're saying this... If you are suffering because of your nation or because of principle, mm. you shouldn't be bothered. Mm. Not at all. Wow. Mm. I'm so sorry mm -hmm. uh, to no, hear that. that. I mean, that when you speak on TV, everyone <laughs> will think it's all is kosher <laughs> with you. You're fine. No, but no, no, no. I mean, I you, you have a lot to deal and with. The, the good thing is that I will not take uh, money wrongly. I will not go seeking for favors right. uh, to do the wrong thing. So I will stay on course. Have, have there mm. been any attempts? Well, that will be a subject of another day. So there, ha there has been an attempt. <laughs> it should be a subject of another day. There has been an attempt. Okay. Uh, now, um, I still on how you joined uh politics because you were talking about your book and you've obviously you've known nane kufado for the longest time yes before he became president if i had asked you to tell me briefly about the man what would you have said i would have said that he would be the best president for ghana but now everything has changed <laughs> why and that is why i feel disappointed because he is practicing the opposite of everything he had preached. Such he as? Oh, we are fighting for freedom of the media, the right to free expression. <coughs> uh, when we felt that uh, a champion was clamp clamping on free speech and all that. So that was the reason of our fighting. We all felt that we should have the right for self-determination mm. where we will choose our leaders freely uh, now he has the opportunity to demonstrate that and he thinks that uh, free and fair election means he must win mm. <laughs> and so it's like uh, there is little difference between that that system and the uh, a champion who, who did not pretend but but you know made sure that his people were appointed so if you organize a charade of an election it's worse than appointing people or selecting people because if you are selecting people everybody knows that these are your choices but if you go and influence elections you you cover your choices as if they are the choices of the people 
and that is bad. And he, that is what he's been doing. Uh, look at the endorsement or approval of DCs under his watch. Everywhere, it was like, if these people will not vote for Nana Kufado's choice, lock them out of the voting area, hold a meeting of a few people somewhere and declare the, the, the I mean, and then... Do you think he knows so, about all of that? Why not? Why should the president not know about how his nominees get approved or not approved? Mm. He was watching it and enjoying, I believe, enjoying what was happening. <laughs> you believe? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, 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 and I didn't think that this could happen under a leader we have followed who had preached free and fair elections, the right to free speech, and all the other freedoms, and the right to fair trial, mm -hmm. and the things that are happening now in this environment that when Anakuvado thinks that you are a criminal, he only needs the court process to legitimize his, his choice or his, his view. I think that uh, is bad. If he had died before becoming a president, I would have described him as the best president that never was. But now I've changed my mind. So you're happy he became president? Oh, I'm not happy he became president. <laughs> but he has demonstrated his real uh, uh, stuff. <laughs> so, so, so now, even it in his presidency has given me opportunity to clarify my thinking and view about him. Okay. Um, and it, it, but apart from these things you talked about, is there anything else that he has done that you just sat back and said, yes, that is the Nanado I, I know? No, I know he has the courage of a leader. Okay. Okay. He has the courage. But courage in the wrong direction is foolhardiness. So <laughs> there's a difference between <laughs> courage and foolhardiness. When he believes in something, whether it is right or wrong, he stays on course and implements you, 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 it. You, you believe e Levy, for instance, is wrong? Totally wrong. Why? Because he's not dealing with the root causes of the problems we are facing as a country. It's just uh, cosmetic. e Levy is just a cosmetic solution. It is not the solution to the problems that we are having. And so I believe that I am helping him, uh, pushing him on course by rejecting E. Levy and doing all that I can to make sure that E. Levy never gets passed. So there will be no compromise, no overture. You, you just com you're just completely against the E. Levy. You think it should be scrapped completely? Yes, in the interest of Nana Kufado, E. Levy should not pass. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, even even after the review, the rate has been reviewed. Or Nana, what if it, it, it is reviewed you further? To, you need to understand the challenge that we are facing now. We have a problem. Yes, and mm -hmm. the pro the solution is not about eleviato. The solution is a comprehensive review of what is wrong. And let us all know where we stand now as a nation. What do you think is wrong? And that's, you know, we if you have a nation where uh, interest payment on your debts is about half of all your income, before you come to talk about emoluments, mm. then there is nothing left for development. And I don't believe that e levy can, can they generate the resources for development. And they are not being truthful to us. So we must sit down, review the situation, look at our options. And you think see, IMF is an option? And see what to do. I, you need to review the situation because I don't have all the information right. about the situation now. Mm. So it is difficult to be proposing, uh, you know, solutions that could be out of context. When we face a similar sol uh, situation mm. in the past, we call the forum and we all analyze the situation and agreed on a common path, which we pursued, which was given then to government to pursue, and we did that. Mm. And we came out of that situation. 
where we are now. In fact, uh, we are there by choice, not by chance, because we went into it with our eyes open. The finance minister played dangerous games and landed us in this situation. Why do I say that? When these guys took office, or even before they took office, what led us to Senche was that um, when President Kufuor, at the end of his term, having benefited from HIPIC funds, mm. which has written off our debts and so on, he, he, he had a, a free hand to do a lot of things. And now, when people are comparing Kufo's regime to any other regime, they talk about uh, a small debt stock and so on. Mm. Forgetting that <laughs> Kufo also borrowed a lot, but because the, all the other debts had been wiped right, off, right. it doesn't show in the records. So when Kufo was leaving, he recklessly announced the single spine pay policy and indicated that it was going to take effect in the first quarter of 2009 when he knew he was leaving office at the end of 2008. Eight. So immediately we came, we were stuck with this pay policy. We tried to negotiate with the labor force and all that for some time. It wasn't working and we were hitting a stalemate. You remember the doctors were on strike and we had to mount mm. tents at yeah. 37 and all yeah. that. So it was getting out of hand. So we took a decision that, well, even though the World Bank and IMF were advising against the implementation of that, it was simply impossible not to yield. So we gave in and, and started implementing it. By the end of the implementation phase, we realized that our pay bill, our wage bill, was taking close to 70% mm -hmm. of the total revenues mm -hmm. that we, 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 we were able to rake in. We said that this is unsustainable for any government because you take the wage bill first out before whatever remains mm. will be used to buy paper and other things for workers and before if anything the mm. development budget is the last one so if nothing is left it means that you are just collecting taxes right. and you will not be able to implement any development project so our effort to now bring down the wage bill or up the total revenues mm. so that the wage bill becomes a lower percentage of the revenues was what uh, constituted the crisis that we were facing. Right. So we tried, brought it to Siste and so on. So by the time we were leaving, after we started implementing the Senche mm. Accord, we had brought it down to around 50, 52% thereabouts. And where the final uh, place percentage we were aiming at would be around 40%. Okay, so we're quite on course. And projections by IMF and World Bank were to the effect that uh, we could be uh, getting the, our GDP growth rate to back to 8% in 2017 and then 2018 and thereabout we could go back to the 14 percent mm. or the double digit that we're achieving before the implementation of the single spine and we so we felt we were in good hands and we managed to maintain this austere position even through the 2016 elections now we lost mm -hmm. after that when this finance minister came around that time to our debt to GDP ratio was also up. So whilst we were fighting to bring the uh, wage bill, wage to, to um, um, total revenues down, we were also fighting to bring the debt to GDP 
ratio down. Right. So they were operating within a ceiling that any year we will not borrow more than a certain percentage of uh, I think five percent or so of our GDP. So we worked within these things and the fundamentals were being corrected. So when they came, the trick that uh, the finance minister played was that, well, if we have our debt to GDP at maybe 70%, maybe if our GDP is 100 cities mm. and our debt is 70 cities, that makes our jet debt to GDP ratio to be 70%. Mm. So we have to do rebasing of the economy. <laughs> rebasing means you increase yeah. the value you assign to things within the... This, it's like if we are in this hall and we know the historical cost of the console yeah. and the mm -hmm. others, and then if it comes to 100, and we think that no, no. Now no, you want enough. to buy a console, <laughs> you need uh, 200. So <laughs> why should it remain at yeah. this? So let us up the prices that we assign to these things. Okay. So they rebased the economy and, and so generated a bigger GDP figure. So with the same debt stock, which constituted 70%, for instance. If the GDP is doubled, then that same figure will now yeah. constitute 35%. Yeah. So they say, uh, so the debt is GDP. far, 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 far below yeah. sustainable <laughs> level. So yeah. we can borrow more. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Yeah. So they deceive themselves, thinking that they could borrow more. But the fundamentals were the same. So within a short space of time, they went to the bond market, left, right, center, they had borrowed up to about 12 billion within that short space, three years or so, to about 12 billion. And this money, as opposed to uh, bilateral or multilateral funding, when you go in for bilateral or multilateral funding, the funds are attached to specific projects. When you take money from private sources by selling bonds, Nobody tells you what you are going to use it mm -hmm. for. So they thought they had free money and they misused it. It never went into development. So if it had gone into development, then the development will improve the economy and expand the tax base. So you can generate more revenues to be able to repay both the interest and the, and the capital. But because it did not go into uh, investment. What it meant was that the debt was accumulating, but the economy was about the same, wasn't uh, right. expanding. So you expect them to so hold a, a forum to discuss this? Yes, so let me tell you. So where we are now, mm. when they were taking those bonds, and the, the, uh, the interest they were offering was so high, and we told them that, look, you could the first euro bond. Yeah. We told them that they could have gotten that same money at an interest rate which was lower by at least three percentage points. Then we realized that they knew the person who was buying the bulk of the bond. So it was like some insider trading. Uh, sell the thing at high price or high interest and let your business partner buy it so that eventually when the nation is repaying part of the repayment will benefit you so and also with the bonds market you have transaction advisors bond specialists uh, bond market specialists and all that all those people will be taking a percentage mm -hmm. of the monies that could be realized and these are people who are all cronies of the government. So we came to a point where taking loans became an economic and profitable venture for the immediate friends and families of people in government. So it was no longer the desirability of the loan to fund a project, 
But the fact that if government goes in for maybe 10 billion, we will get 10 million uh, commission to share. So there was that appetite for more borrowing, more borrowing, more borrowing, which has brought us where we are. So where we are now, we are at a point where further borrowing is simply needed to go and repay interest on loans and not investment in any development. So this is why you are against the EMA. So we are where we are now. Mm. And so now, whilst we were complaining about the size of the wage bill, now the wage bill is pay, uh, paling into insignificance. Interest rate is higher than the wage bill. So the two of them mm. takes close to 100% of the revenues we generate. So nothing will save us from this situation. 6.5 million that they are talking about cannot save the situation. The E-Levy, they themselves know that it is not the 6.5 million or 6.9 million that they are looking at. They have found a new uh, love of, you know, pledging our regular fund sources taking loans and collateralizing the, the, the regular fund. So they have collateralized uh, a get fund now. So even though when you buy anything consumable, mm. uh, you pay get fund. The money goes yeah. into the get fund account, but because they had pledged the get fund against some loan which they had taken and squandered already, it means that that money will just go and be paying debt. So get fund is in debt a uh, common fund is in some debt they want to uh, uh, this thing Ursula, uh, levy energy sector levy which was created by president mahama so that we should be able to clear all our energy sector debts and get our energy sector back into action which they complain about that they would they would scrap it they came they never scrapped it they increase it and rather Isn't colla that such a political thing and too? also collateralize it. Mm. So now we are paying double the amount of energy sector levy that President Mahama introduced. But instead of the proceeds going to uh, retire the energy sector debts, it's going for repayment of some debt, and the energy sector <coughs> debts are also growing beyond mm. manageable yeah. levels. So these are a huge challenges that we need to sit down and to talk, talk about. about the energy sector debt overhang the you know the unsustainable uh, debts and interest payments and wage payments and all that these are big issues that right. we need to sit together to talk about so we will not support the institution <laughs> of e-levy which will also be collateralized so that in f within 15 years, by the time you come to power, the, the, you cannot abolish it because it has been collateralized and the monies have been brought forward right. and misused. Okay. So that's one of the reasons. Reason why. Why you are the talked. second reason is lack of accountability okay. in the system. So if we give you money and you cannot account for it, nobody will be... But is that, is that not what we've been crying about for the longest time in no, this No, no, this is uh, it, it, you know, COVID. You are blaming these right. difficulties on COVID. But have, COVID brought untold hardship. It has brought untold financial inflows. And those inflows have been mismanaged. Like the, what the, we the World Bank director, the for World instance, Bank recently mentioned on Joy that yes. uh, they had given Ghana in excess of 400 million. Yes. Instead of the 100 million. But that one had been underdeclared by this government. <laughs> and then IMF gave us 2 billion. Then after that, we took money from our heritage fund and all that and then there were donations so, and there were donations, private donations private donations so uh there had been an excess expenditure of about 10 or so billion on COVID that was not approved by parliament there is no evidence about the what that money was used for so the budget that is being reviewed now you look at any ministry's budget then they, they will put the COVID expenditure maybe 40 million mm. you ask the minister 
what that 40 million was used for he said it was spent on me at ministry of finance but placed in my budget so <laughs> i don't know what it was used for right so we said that let us investigate it and so we went to Parliament as an, a, a way of Joe Wai says that as a way of reaching out mm. that if you want e levy these are some of the conditions that you must fulfill we must find out how these monies mm. have been used so let us investigate Bagbin ap approved that we must set up the committee Joe Wise representing MPP came and said it what do you think right. about him hmm? what do you think about him about Joe Wise as a person, he's a nice gentleman. I've traveled with him and okay. so on. But his politics is bad. It's something else. Mm. You know, he gets carried away by partisanship so that he doesn't care whether his partisanship would, would compromise his image as a good lawyer. Because the decisions he has been taking on the floor of the house are very absurd. And I think that... There's a war in you. The There's this. There seems to be a friction between him and the. Him, mm -hmm. uh, to change because, at the end of the day, whatever you do politically will come and go. But your reputation, you cannot. Your mm -hmm. reputation is like your shadow. It will follow you everywhere. So if you follow partisanship to damage your reputation, it will stay with you forever, and, and that is what is. Did you see any of this panning out when? in 2020 after the elections we realized that we had a hung parliament people were excited that oh yeah for once we have you know but did you see any of this happening because it looks like we, we no one anticipated that there were going to be such uh, friction on the floor no, 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 fights. Me, I, I knew it would happen you, you, you did yes i did i knew it would how happen. so because when by the natural operation of laws mm. the laws of power when there is a hegemon mm. who had enjoyed absolute power for a long time, when he sees power slipping out of his hands, <laughs> he would not leave that power without a fight. So he will try to fight back. And those who are gaining the power who also want to fight. Right. To so none of the, the fisticuffs so uh, there surprised must you. Be, there must be friction right. before that change would happen will happen okay uh -huh. so in the world on the world stage uh we have what you call balance of power mm. that secures the peace in the world so whenever uh, power is slipping from a hegemon mm. there is always conflict before it shifts right so it's a natural thing okay. so it is good for ghana okay. that <laughs> these things are happening right if it is managed well it will end up with are we managing it well though so far i think uh, it's okay okay we will come to have a parliament that can insist on its primary objectives okay because now parliament is trying to insist on its uh, uh, duties and responsibilities of holding the government accountable mm. And those who had controlled parliament and prevented it from performing this role want to retain that grip mm. on parliament. And parliament is fighting to free itself. Okay. So if we are able to free parliament and we get to a point where parliament can hold the executive in check, it will be better that for That would be a lovely Ghana. Yes. Still on parliament, what do you make of Ajwa Safo? Um, and all the issues that are coming up around her and with her her absence in parliament well, they, there are some there are some people in the npp who think that she's blackmailing the party she's sabotaging the party in fact the last one i heard was that she was sabotaging the party you see, this sabotage business of sabotage and so it's in line with people who think that what ndc is doing is sabotaging <laughs> if you believe that e-levy is not good and you have any way of making sure it doesn't get passed and you implement that you are not sabotaging anybody right. you are working in the interest of the country i haven't engaged her so i don't know do you her. are you are you friends with her oh no no really no, no. right i haven't engaged her so i don't know what her intentions are mm. if her intentions are to make sure that e levy doesn't pass 
then I support what he's doing because ELV is not a good thing for the country. But if it is for something else, then we must judge her by the objectives he's trying to seek and the reasons why she's seeking those objectives. But since I have not engaged her, I would not want to be judgmental okay. in, in what is happening. But uh, the response from her party is not the best. I think that uh, the party should have a nicer way of dealing with that situation. Because you see, the whole business of trying to use the, 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 the game of numbers in this parliament to still get what they want. That is the problem that this government is facing. Mm. And they sh the, the, the earlier they pull the wool out <laughs> of their faces, the better it will be for them. You cannot win the game of numbers in this situation. So Israel, since 1945, mm -hmm. has been operating a coalition uh, government. Mm -hmm. Israel has not collapsed. Yeah. They have been moving. It depends on the attitude of the person who holds uh, power. Okay? Uh, Germany yeah, and many other it. countries yeah. have been doing it. So if you are faced with a situation where the objective reality suggests that you must operate like a coalition government, you learn the tools and use them. You then just go and still keep dreaming that I can get what I want when I was controlling parliament. It is simply not possible and not feasible. So the problem is with the attitude of the government and its functionaries. The earlier they learned that the situation has changed, the better it will be for all of us. Right. You understand? Yeah. Because now, this game of numbers, they think that they can win it through a very expensive exercise. One, try to force some of our MPs uh, out of parliament and take their seats. They've tried this now with this Asin, whatever MP. Mm. It hasn't solved any problem. The matter is in court. Mm. And now you have one of your MPs struck down by stroke. So she, he is in intensive care. So even if this Asin MP is kicked out, you are back to square one. <laughs> you understand? Again, you tried the, the reason why they are descending heavily on Ajwasafo is ab again about this game of numbers. Okay? You are pushing to remove Ajwasafo. Unknown to you, that same law has caught two other MPP MPs. Who had also been so absent. Are you prepared to sacrifice three of them? And how sure are you that you are going to win all three by elections? Mm. You see? So again, it is foolhardiness about this, uh, you know, game of numbers. But whatever happens, if they are not up by about 30 MPs, there's no way they can win the game of numbers because majority of your ministers must come from parliament and if all these 30 or 40 ministers are attending to government business you cannot get all of them always in parliament, parliament right. you understand so Hopefully. the way to go is to work with understanding with the uh, minority uh, NPP, right. uh, NDC. NDC. okay but if you think that well we are uh, macho. We are going to. Aren't you? Aren't you being are macho? To, you are being very macho. We are going to have our way. <laughs> you can't have your way in right. this situation. Right. There is no way MPP can have okay. their way. They better think about it. Right. And nobody should accuse us of sabotage because even in the absence of the passage of e levy, other measures introduced by the same government are oh, being so passed. That's true. So what is the problem with e levy? That's that true. is what you okay. must Someone about. just sent me um, a, a picture and a question for you mm -hmm. about an NDC green card. Are you aware of this? Yes. We are, let me... Okay, thank you. Sorry, sorry for yeah. using my left. Yes, we are issuing a membership card. Membership card. Yes. And how is that going? 
It's going pretty well. Yeah? Yes. You're looking for new members? <laughs> no, this one, mm. we are replacing okay. our existing cards. Cards, okay. 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 And we are but can new members sign up for this? Or not is this yet. Not, not yet. yet. Okay, so only existing Maybe members. Maybe by the end of March, right. we will now open the space for new members to register. But what we are doing now, we are doing it in phases. The first phase is to replace all the cards of the existing card holding members. Right. And we are not going to use just this uh, plastic card mm. because the plastic card costs 20 CDs. Okay. Not everybody in our party can afford the 20 CDs. Really? So we, yes. So we are still issuing at the paper card at okay. two CDs. Okay. So everybody can then afford the two CDs. And at any point in time where you think you are ready to exchange the mm. the, the two CDs card with the 20 card, you then you do that. You okay. come and then oh, we'll that's, we that's really cool. You. Okay, we've got just about 15 or so minutes to wrap up. What do you do for fun? When you are not at the NDC headquarters, when you are not bashing government? My hobby is farming. Farming? I'm into farming seriously. You, you, you farm for fun? Well, um, it's it's an economic activity. Okay. But I like farming. You like I mean, farming. Uh, roaming around in my so you don't hang out with friends and, over and drinks and when I kebab, uh, I I won't listen to music. I mm. listen to reggae. Reggae, yeah. you love reggae. Ben. Who's your favorite reggae artist? The artist? king himself, <laughs> Bob Marley. <laughs> What's your favorite from Bob Marley? Oh, I've mentioned a lot. Uh, chase those crazy boy hairs out of town. <laughs> Are you choosing uh, that for a reason? Stiff naked fools. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and then war. War? war. Yes. Uh, yeah? Before you go, I'll pick your thoughts on the Russian invasion. Yes. Because you, you, you've mentioned Stalin. You've mentioned you, so I'll pick your thoughts on yes, uh, yeah, the yeah, Russian yeah. invasion. Yes. But you, you, you listen to Bob Marley. A lot. Why? 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 Why there, does is sense, in there is sense in the music if you okay. listen to it. You see, there are many people who think that because reggae stars always smoke Indian hemp and all <laughs> that. It's a bad perception, so honestly. Like, yes, yeah. it's a bad perception. Yeah. But if you listen to the wisdom in reggae music, it's better than these hip lives where people be shouting, go, oh. go, meaningless. Uh, are you sure? Maybe you haven't really paid attention. No, there are some of the things when somebody is shouting, can't you know it? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't listen to hip life at all, hip life? I you don't listen I am, to Sarkodie. I am too old for this. So these fans you call Sarkodie and uh, others, I don't know them. If you want oh. me to identify, even you can't Shatawale. make Sakodia out. No. How about Shatawale? I, that is even worse. I can't mention them. Yeah. So, so I can. I mean, <laughs> appreciate their music. The hip life. You can't the shouting and the other things is just too much. Oh, but they're not. I listen to reggae. Reggae. Uh huh. And before then, I was listening to real high life. Okay. Nana Padu. Right. Uh, Daddy Lumbas and uh, the, the mm. uh, uh, City Boys. Right. And, uh, I was so you love Daddy Lumba? A lot. Daddy I, Lumba, I Kojo Entry. So all Who's your choice? The, the music uh, makers in the country. Okay. Who's now, your choice? I want you to choose friends. one. Hmm? Kojo Entry, Daddy Lumba. I, I, I don't like them by their names but i like the individual tracks okay that they play so i can't say that i like all the work of that lumba okay or i get or i get you thing. but I definitely like reggae lumba. any day for you reggae, uh, even reggae. if it's not bob marley yes if, you, if it is not bob marley you have the others yeah you <laughs> listen to them so that that's what you, that's how you cool down yes by listening to reggae yes yes, yes. I because see. i learn a lot Mm. The wisdom they espouse. Right. It's a lot. I see. And do you hang out at all? I don't have the time to hang out. But you honestly. have friends. Yes, I. Have. So how do you? I have very good friends, so we can we. How do you bond? In our own ways, because you see, uh, I'm sure you also know it that when people see you as a celebrity. Mm. It asks us some checks about <laughs> where you can go and where That's you cannot true. go. Okay. But for these uh, 
a looter that we did last two weeks. Mm. I I couldn't remember the last time you I were went out to like Makola. that. Yeah. Were you? Because did you see? Were you mopped? Did yes, they yes. come around? Yeah. But if you go there, if I go there today as an individual, there's no way I can hide myself. No, and you it can't. will be difficult for you to even do any shopping. <laughs> Wherever you are, people will They'll help you out. out. They'll hold your bags they for you. Just come, everybody. Let's take selfie. Let's do this. So there are places you can't go. So you're not so, that old school. You know selfie. <laughs> <laughs> so there are places you can't go. So I have very few friends. Uh, and we have uh, spots where we can easily hide out yeah. and, 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 and so on. So uh, that's, uh, that's what okay. I How long have you been married? Oh, since 1982. 1982, so that's 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, you've been married for 40 years. Wow, how, how have you managed All to right. keep... Your wife is your friend, so... Friendship, if it is genuine, will last. 40 years? <laughs> yes. And you're still together, so yes. growing. Yes. Why? You want me to <laughs> experiment, live, and then go to <laughs> <laughs> No. I know people who, who tried and no, 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 after no. three months, two months, one year, they were out. No, 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 no. What, what is the secret for you? It's, it's the friendship. Yes. You just need to be friends. Yes, I love her and she loves me. There's, there's no reason why. And we we real her. men say, I love you. There are some men who can say, I love, love you. We love our children, Aww. too. Uh -huh. Yeah. And now it's I beautiful. have grandchildren, so. Oh, you do? How many? Oh, I'm getting close to eight or so. Oh, wow. Around eight. Yeah. I Do you enjoy spending yeah, time with them? I enjoy their company. Yeah. Life, so yeah. I, I, they are the ones who may steal my love for my wife. <laughs> for your wife, right? There's a competition <laughs> yes, there. I always call them. And if no, one has come, no one has come close to, they to, always to competing with your wife's love. Well, that's the subject for us. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in side ch chicks? Have you ever, ever had a side chick? <laughs> that's the longest uh, that, pause ever. That question is in intrusive. Oh, it's not. It's like, I mean, do you, do you think it's okay? It's like Russia moving <laughs> into Ukraine. <laughs> Ukraine so. Is it okay, though? Uh, is it okay for a married man to have a side chick? Well, it depends on what you believe in. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you First don't believe in that. People think that uh, mm. uh, if people can support lesbianism, gayism, mm. and all that. So I wouldn't have any problem with anybody who also think that either polygamy or side chase or anything. So I don't have any strong views on, on those things. You won't judge anyone who no, no, goes in for a side, mm. a side chick. Mm. I interesting. That's really interesting. Mm. Anyway, um, just to wrap up on yes. our interview. <laughs> you were asking about Russia. You yes. <laughs> what, what do you think about it? I mean, when, I think this is the seventh day. I think that we should all add our voices to call for ceasefire and go back to the negotiating table. I will not judge any side wrong okay. because they have all done things wrong. And uh, if you don't understand the situation, you just pass judgment based on emotions, based on pictures that are flying about people dying and all that. And some of you these pictures have been found to be false. You may make a mm. big, big mistake. The real problem is a fight for supremacy between Russia and the United States. So Ukraine happens to find itself in between in, in a situation where mm. when two elephants fight, then the grass will suffer. And a friend of mine has even added that it is not about elephants fighting. Even when two elephants make love, the grass will still suffer. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I've never suffer. thought about that one. <laughs> it's true. You see, um, I think that I have some sympathies with Russia hmm. and some sympathies with Ukraine. Okay. okay. Why Russia? Why would you sympathize with Russia? Because, you see, America has made us to believe that every superpower 
has an area of influence. And every superpower assumes the right to even do preemptive strikes when you think that your interest, your national interest is at stake. We've okay, seen it happen in so many countries. Yes, the, mm. the Americans came to, uh, what do you call it? Iraq. Iraq. Libya. There was a time they were in Iran, mm. and they are still on the necks of Iran. They, are, they, are, they were in Libya. They were in Afghanistan, Afghanistan. Everywhere. Are they telling us that those countries don't have uh, territorial integrity, the right to their territorial integrity? They do. Uh, were they not sovereign countries? They are. And there was a time when uh, Russia was very close to Cuba. And so the Russians decided to place missiles yeah. on the soils of Cuba. When the missiles were on sea coming, the Americans detected it and warned Russia that if you don't turn back your ships, we will bomb them whatever yeah. it takes because we will not allow you to plant missiles 90 kilometers close, close to, to our America. border. Yeah. That is, our, that is our backyard. You understand? So this is a principle that America itself had been working with. Now you have Ukraine and uh, 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 you know, Russia. Mm -hmm. Russia used to be USSR. Yeah. That included Russia and 15 other uh, countries coming together. So after the uh, uh, Second World War, mm. Europe and America came together to sign the North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO. called NATO. Yeah. And they guaranteed each other that when one is on the attack, it is an attack on all of them, so right. they will all mobilize to defend each other. Because of that, the uh, USSR also signed the Warsaw Pact involving all these 15 states so if you attack any one of them they will also attack you so these two big powers and their yeah. cronies became the two main uh, superpowers mm. and that was the basis of the cold war and each of them control nuclear weapons mm -hmm. so if you attack any of them and they they deploy nuclear weapon it can kill all humanity so whether it is America that fires first or Russia that mm. fired first, it could consume all of us. So what was keeping the world together was mutually assured death or destruction. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody should detonate, all of us would die. Yeah. So nobody would want to detonate. Then the other countries which were not part of these alliances came together, led by Osajefo, Kwame Nkrumah, Kwame Nkrumah and the uh, others, uh, NASA of Egypt yeah. and others, so they form the non-aligned movement mm. so that they are not part of the East and they are not part of the West, but they will pick and choose issues. When there is any issue, they will discuss and see who is right and who is wrong. Okay, so they were also a counterbalancing force. Now, around the 90s, getting to the 89, 90, when Russia had, uh, USSR had mm -hmm. challenges and it was collapsing, there was pressure from the West for USSR to disengage and allow these 14 other countries to gain their independence. independence yeah. Okay. So they, they, they signed an agreement and Russia expressed their fears that, well, we will allow them to go. So long as you will not extend your NATO to them, to cover them. Right. So if you don't allow them <coughs> to join NATO, then they will not position weapons near our border and in our area of influence. So they can go and run mm. their, 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 their politics on their own. And there were agreements signed. Yeah. Okay. Minsk, yeah. So when these agreements were signed, they stuck to it from 91 up to 97. Around 97, 
then Poland and uh, 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 two other countries, Hungary and one other country, they decided that they wanted a NATO membership. And this was under the instigation of America. So the Americans met the Europeans in Madrid. France, Germany were not in favor of that. They said, that, look, these are newly independent countries. Their economies are weak. They cannot bring their militaries up to the standard of NATO. But once they join and they come on the attack, we will be forced to go and defend them. Mm. So it will be too expensive. And moreover, the agreement we had with the Russians, we will be going back on those agreements. But America pressurized them and they agreed to admit these three countries. Since then, up to 97 uh, uh, to date, about 10 of the countries or 11 of them have all joined the NATO. NATO. You know, so the biggest one and the one that is closest to Russia now is Ukraine. Ukraine. And Ukraine is making effort to join and the NATO is making effort to receive Ukraine. Now, if you receive Ukraine, what it means is that you have the right to position your missiles Close along even the, the border, border. Yeah. of Russia. And that will mean hanging the noose around the necks of Russia. And meanwhile, there was a part of um, Ukraine where Russia just took over. Annexed. Crimea. Crimea. Yeah. Crimea used to be part of Russia. Yeah. And while they were all in, in uh, USSR, the Russian general secretary of the Russian party, somewhere in 1954, decided to give that piece of land to uh, Ukraine for whatever reasons. But that is the area where Russia places their warships and the others. So when Ukraine had to separate, if Russia didn't take that piece back, it means that it will restrict the Russian Navy as to where they will be operating from. You do have so you, do, you do sympathize with Russia. So there is a problem there. Okay. And you think okay. diplomacy And I think that diplomacy should uh, you should resolve it. Mm -hmm. So Russia overrun Crimea so that they can protect they are they are warships and they have access to the black sea and others now it is a problem between them the moment um ukraine joins nato nato will help ukraine to fight russia to take back crimea and then that will block the russian access to the black sea russia will not sit down for that news to be hung uh, around their necks so the same way that the Americans warned Russia that don't bring your missiles into Cuba, Cuba mm -hmm. because Cuba is 90 kilometers from our land. I believe that if that principle of uh, area of influence should apply, it should apply equally to Russia too, that Russia should not sit down for NATO to come and deploy along their common border with Ukraine. So I think that but when you take national interests alone, yeah. you say that, well, what does uh, Ukraine have to do? What, does you, what should Ukraine care about the fighting between America mm -hmm. and Russia for influence? We are an independent country. We have the right to join mm -hmm. whoever we want. We have the right to organize ourselves and so on. But you have been placed there. Everybody and their geographical location presents advantages and challenges. It is up to you to look at your location and find your locational advantages and challenges and organize yourself right. in such a way that you can still progress as a nation. And so um, it is somehow a conflict between national uh, narrow national interests and strategic right. interests on the globe. That's so a lot of education. To, uh, so a a, a lot of education tonight. Not to <laughs> condemn Russia, mm. nor condemn Ukraine. Right. They have to sit down and find a diplomatic way to resolve the of balancing the interests mm. of Russia, Ukraine, 
and NATO. Okay. Will you still run for general secretary? We are not there yet. I will declare when I will declare what I will run for. But but but, <laughs> but we, you, yeah, we are not there yet. But it's you. Yes, yes, but we are not there yet. You know, we have laws in the party. Mm. Uh, you you read about my peace uh, warning people who pick up too early yes. and the sanctions they will be facing. Yes, yes. If I go to declare, then who will implement <laughs> those sanctions? Okay, okay definitely uh, we are not there yet. I, <laughs> yes, yes. I respect that. Yes. Would you ever consider running for president? We are not, I know we are not there yet. No but politician mm. says no mm. to any position. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> if opportunity presents itself, yes. But we are not there yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want to live to see that day. Okay. Because I'm sure that your immigration will then, play reggae. Then play, uh, pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll play reggae. <laughs> something from Bob Marley. Do you have something for uh, Bob Marley uh, for general as we wrap up? Thank you so much. It's always you, always a pleasure talking to you. Which Bob Marley track is that? <laughs> Zion Train. Zion Train. Oh, you didn't get chased. You can get war or chase those crazy uh, ball heads. Chase those. Or still make it fools. <laughs> but, but why those three? Huh? Why those three? Are they your favorites? Oh, if you are fighting, oh, is there any bald head that you want to chase out? Emancipation mm. songs. Mm. Chase those crazy bald heads out of town. Okay. There are bald heads that are messing up our country, so they must be chased out of town. So, <laughs> so who are these bald heads? Well, your guess is as good as mine. I have no guess, actually. <laughs> I can't even have that one. <laughs> Thank you so much, General. Uh, but by the way, do you like it when people call you Mosquito? I don't care. I'm a teacher. Uh, right. Teachers don't run away from nicknames. <laughs> so this Jedna Mosquito tin was was brought in an attempt to dampen my spirit right. away from the things I was doing in Parliament. Okay. So I adopted it and shamed them. <laughs> and now there are I have more than hundred kids around Ghana who have been named after General, General Mosquito. That's true. It's a good subject, hey? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do you have the song now? You can't get okay. the song. He's found it. Yes. It's in a relationship with that. Uh, the line kept... Do you have it? Do you have it?